what is up ladies and gentlemen welcome to a brand new video today i have a video talking about um, improving your aim before i want to get far into this video i want to say this video is mainly oriented on um, console players um, i will be talking about a lot of things with aim which will help pc players as well uh, but we'll also be going through some aim assist stuff and sensitivity stuff which uh, is more uh, focused on the console player but later on we'll get into uh, other stuff that might uh, be useful if you're a beginning uh, PC player. Uh, today we'll be talking about sensitivity, aim assist, tracking, uh, recoil control, which I've made a separate video about, but I want to kind of uh, talk about the topic in this video as well. Uh, I've made a more in-depth video about this separately, which I'll probably leave in the description. Uh, we'll also be talking about hip fire and uh, snapping, twitching, um, that type of aiming. Um, so I want to talk with the most important thing, which is sensitivity. Um, I wanted to say there's no best sensitivity. That's very important to know. Um, whatever sensitivity, you, you will see the best players across the world, they will all use some different weird settings. Some have really strange settings and some have actually very basic settings. Um, so there's no best sensitivity. Uh, what what I think is important to do is to just build muscle memory with a sensitivity you feel comfortable with. There's a few uh, like little tricks that are important to know uh, with sensitivity. I personally use 90 for the soldier and 60 for the zoom. Um, if you're able to control a higher sensitivity, you should do it. Definitely prefer a higher sensitivity over a lower sensitivity. Because higher sensitivity, if you keep control of it, uh, you'll keep yourself alive in more close range uh, situations. Um, however, if you're not that precise, like, like, don't be afraid to drop it down. I've seen really good players use like 50 sensitivity and even a lower zoom uh, sensitivity. Um, so everything will work, but um, if you can control higher, you should. Um, zoom and ADS uh, or zoom and um, soldier aim sensitivity are connected to each other, which is important to know. Um, let's say if you have soldier aim right now, it's on 60%. Um, my soldier aim is on 90%, which means um, my zoom sensitivity is 60% of what my soldier aim sensitivity does. So this is 90% of what it can do. And when I ADS, it is 60% of that 90%, uh, if that makes any sense. So for an example, if I put this to 100, um, my soldier sense and my ADS uh, sense will be just the same, uh, will be having the same speed. Now we're going to the next topic, it's aim assist. What I, what I wanted to say one more thing about sensitivity is um, even if you have a bad day, stick to the sensitivity to whatever you used to. That's what I always done, I've used the sensitivity for 4 years now I believe, from Battlefield 1 all the way to up to Battlefield 5. I never really changed it, um, so try and keep those the same. Um, before we actually get into the aim assist stuff, um, what's also good to know is, let me change back my sensitivity. Um, there's something else that will control your sensitivity and these are dead zones and aim acceleration. Um, I have my, I think by default this is set to 50, I'm not very sure, I think it's by default it's on 50. I have it on 0, I used to have it on 100. Uh, but I have it on zero. Aim acceleration, if you have it on 100 or 50, um, it might help you be a little bit more precise. Um, but if you play the game a lot, I would definitely advise to put this on zero. The reason for this for this is it, it will learn you to be more consistent. Aim acceleration, we can uh, put the example. Uh, so now I have it on zero, which means it takes uh, zero uh, percent aim acceleration to go to full speed. If that makes sense it goes to your full potential uh, speed this is for ads and um, for zoom if i have this on 100 you will notice the difference my sensitivity is going to look a lot slower so now it takes it takes a lot it, it takes a little bit longer to get to the full speed you want to get to see slowly it will go faster and you will get to full speed um, this can help you to be more precise, but if you play the game like a decent amount of hours, let's say like, let's say you, you almost play the game every day, almost, 
then you should try and put this to zero. It will make you a lot more consistent. Uh, uniform soldier aiming, I have this on personally. Um, I don't exactly, I'm gonna be honest, I don't know exactly what it does, but from what I've known, it is, um, it makes your sensitivity for uh, different zooms uh, the same. So in case you're using a sniper, uh, which has a lot more zoom, it will make it feel the same as when I'm using the nighter side, the one I'm using right now. Um, so I have that on for more consistency. Uh, so yeah, it's a little bit of a personal preference, I guess. Uh, next thing we're going to be talking about is aim assist. Um, I think aim assist is right here. So this is uh, especially more focused on the uh, console part. Uh, these are the aim assist settings I've always used since uh, zoom snap was enabled. Uh, put this to zero pretty fast after it got released. Um, zoom snap, it will help you if you're a beginning player. If you play this game semi, semi consistently, you should put this on zero. The reason for that is zoom snap is, first of all, it's quite inconsistent, but also it takes away control over your aim. So I can genuinely say I play better without zoom snap than with zoom snap. Uh, this is because I have more control over what I'm doing and it's way more consistent. Um, so if you want to practice your aim more, you should definitely disable zoom snap if you have it enabled. Uh, with soldier aim assist, uh, since I've always had this on 100%. Um, if you want this, it's up to you. Um, it gets a little bit sticky. Um, so what, uh, what the um, slowdown does, it, like if you have fast uh, speed, and you come across a target, it will slow your aim down a little bit. Um, if you have it on 100, it will do it more than when you have it to 50. Uh, the problem with this is if you have multiple targets in front of you, you got to be very well practiced with the aim assist to still be, be able to take out both targets without like your aim being completely turned off, especially when you're sniping. If you if you're a main sniper, um, I would 100% advise to turn off um, turn off uh, the, the sl slowdown aim assist as well. Uh, we'll we'll make you a lot more consistent, and uh, it should be quite easy to get used to actually. All right. So next thing I want to be talking about is tracking. Tracking is um, trying to track your targets that are running across the field, going sideways most of the time, or jumping. Or tracking is uh, is a very important thing in first-person shooters. You won't really practice this against bots or against stationary targets. Uh, on PC, you have these special aim um, aim trainers, which aren't very useful on console because on console uh, you have stuff like aim assist, and aim assist is different in every game, so. Um, tracking can be quite difficult. There's a, a few things you can actually practice uh, on console, but most of the tracking comes down to having good control over your aim and play a lot. So it's all experience. Um, there's one, um, I guess, exercise you can call it, uh, you can do with tracking, and that's uh, tracking your own movement on a, on, a, on a stationary target. This will also make your aim a lot more precise, and it will indirectly help you with tracking uh, moving targets. Um, but what a good practice is, if you find something like a pole, or it, it can work on anything, but we'll, we'll try this pole here. Um, what you're trying to do is, I think I have custom stock on this, I'm not sure. Um, what you try to do is you try to center your aim to the middle of the pole as much as possible and try to walk around it. Um, this is a very good practice to make your aim much more precise. And it's also good like if you're, if you're around corners and you want to be more precise, um, it's good to have very consistent aim uh, that works together with your movement. Uh, what's important with this is that you don't do this up close because up close it gets a little bit easier not necessarily but um, but you also do it from further range um, to make it a little bit more challenging for yourself even though the target will is going to move less you see i'm already struggling with this range a little bit um, and also what's important with this is that you practice this with uh, different specializations you have specializations that will increase your movement speed when you're adsing um, so using stuff like uh, light and stock or custom stock whatever it's called um, it's good for this, um, I guess, exercise as well. Now, the next thing is recoil. Recoil is something that a lot of people struggle with. 
But um, recoil is a very big part of having uh, good aim, being able to control your recoil. Um, if you're a new player, you should try and stick to a little bit more of the lower recoil weapons. It will help a lot. Low re recoil weapons are weapons like the Sten on the Medic class, um, let's say the Ribby Rolls on the Soul class, uh, for the Support class it's the FG. It's all very low recoil weapons. Also what's uh, good to practice with is uh, weapons that only have um, vertical recoil. You have horizontal recoil, go sideways, and you have vertical recoil. For the best example I have is the MP28 has a lot of horizontal recoil, not that much vertical recoil. Now what's easier to control is the weapons that have a lot of vertical recoil but no horizontal recoil. Or pretty much are mainly focused on having the vertical recoil. The reason for that is with vertical recoil you only have to press your thumb down to counter the recoil. With horizontal recoil you gotta control the um, the recoil both ways. So these guns can be extremely tricky. Um, it's guns like the MP28, the M2 Carbine, uh, M1907. They all have a lot of horizontal recoil. I want to talk about with recoil control is um, is what, what what a lot of people do as a mistake is they move while shooting. Um, this makes recoil and shooting pattern overall very uncontrollable and very um, very random as well. So if you don't have to write specializations for it, because you always got to check your specializations for recoil control and the way you play. Uh, but most of the time, what you want to do is you want to stand still when you're shooting targets, especially for mid range. Um, standing still to control recoil is a lot easier than uh, when you're moving. What also makes it easier to control recoil is instead of even going stationary, go crouch or even go prone. This will make the recoil a lot less and a lot more controllable, especially on guns with bipods, obviously. But uh, already being crouched uh, should help you control the recoil a lot more. Uh, than when you're standing up and if you have very good recoil control moving while shooting is very effective um, but this is like one of the last parts when you've kind of mastered recoil control you should try and um, practice moving and shooting at the same time the best tip i have for you is use the same gun use the same gun for um, for a while so you get used to the recoil pattern and you should be able to control it quite easily um, now there is something else you can practice, and that's um, the hip fire aim. If you have a different zoom and a different hip fire aim, what I um, it's a little little way to practice this. Um, the hip fire aim you can you can try and practice that on stuff like combined arms and um, and the practice range, but really the best way to do it is to play extremely aggressive with SMGs. Um, the EMP, the ZK, um, the MP28, they all have extremely good hip fire. Literally, try and play rounds without ADSing on maps like uh, Devastation or Underground. With those maps, you can play extremely aggressive and you can hip fire and still be very effective. Uh, it's just a very simple way and as, as, uh, as well effective way to um, practice your hip fire aim. Uh, with guns like the MP28 and the EMP, they have deadly hip fire. Like those guns can, in most situations, be better off hip firing than ADSing. So um, tips: play aggressive and uh, focus on hip firing. All right. So one of the last topics I want to talk about is uh, snapping. Snapping from targets is uh, it's very simple. You try to snap from targets as fast as possible as you can. Uh, this is mainly done on PC, uh, since with PC you have a mouse and you have a very different sensitivities. Often on console people use too low of a sensitivity to really be able to practice um, snapping to different targets. Um, but it, there, there's a possible way to practice. It's also for PC players if you want to practice uh, snapping. Um, I don't want to. I'm not. A, I'm not an expert at this. Let's uh, set that straight. I'm not. A, I'm not a good snapper or whatever. I've been practicing it a lot myself, and these are ways you can practice it yourself as well. Uh, I don't want to say that I'm uh, very good at snapping uh, that well. That was a good snap right there. Um, the snapping, as you can see right there, is trying to be as efficient as possible. That's from going one target to the other one as fast as possible. 
You can try and slow this down, you know, you can you can try and first you see, like very slow but try to make it in control and try to be as accurate as possible. Um, but the best way you can do this is literally go to combine arms, set the bots to as easy as possible, and then try and practice uh, snapping. And slowly you go faster and faster, and it's also a good way to warm up your aim, um, especially for console people, because uh, there's a stuff like aim assist, um, and you don't practice aim assist uh, in the practice range. Those, I th I'm pretty sure those targets don't have any slowdown, so it's better to actually practice it. On, on boss than to do it on uh, to do it in the practice range on you know random targets because uh, on these bots you actually get proper images. Uh, you can practice tracking in a little bit uh, but these bots will never really move um, as they would in alright so um so yeah snapping the best way to practice it is um, just to go into combine arms Try to uh, to practice it. You can also practice it on random targets, like um, like these holes here or whatever. Uh, but you won't be as it won't be as efficient as actually practicing it on, uh, on these spots. Um, so yeah, it's a little tip on how to practice um, tracking or how to practice snapping. Snapping overall takes a lot of trial and error and practice and putting in hours. Um, but this is a way to maybe speed up that process of getting uh, better at snapping. Um, so yeah, uh, the very last tip I want to give to you guys is aim doesn't come in one day. It takes so many time. It takes so many hours to practice and have good aim. Um, so many things you want to try and build muscle memory. Um, you will have bad days and good days with aim. Just go through it. Don't change your settings too much. Um, as long as you, if, if you know it's going to improve it, then change your settings. But don't change your settings just because you have a bad day or whatever. Because uh, that won't really help. So yeah, just um, practice, play a lot, and uh, hopefully these tips will help you out. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to hit a like button. If you have any questions, uh, let them know in the comments. I'll try to read them and maybe help out. And, uh, I hope this video helped out in some way. And uh, I hope to see you guys in the next video.